Matthew was a very loved child. He was an 18-year-old American normal, boy like normal everybody boy. else exactly. in this country. Normal boy. When he was born, just the cutest little baby with big brown eyes. He was a handsome little boy, and he was very happy all the time. He was such a free spirit. He was so happy all the time, and he had a, a smile to die for. I remember Matt's smile, boy, I'll tell you something. He was yep. a charm. Yeah, those eyes of his could probably get him in a lot of trouble. He's always involved, you know, he likes to be in, involved in sports. We used to play basketball, paintball. And... And he's always a scrapper, though. That's one thing we liked about if you picked on him, he'd pick on your back. Someone to always talk to, you know, personal relationships, someone to be depend on. He was a great person, lots of fun. I miss him. I miss him every day in my life. We called him Matthew, we called him Matt. The kids, the girls a lot called him Maddie, you know, but um, he was my Matt. And um, he loved to fool around with the kids and wrestle with the boys. And he and Annie were very, very close because they were the closest in age. And those two, they were like two peas in a pod. Um, but unfortunately, um, apparently he was having trouble sleeping and he was having bad dreams and waking up and um, starting to have like panic attacks. That's when I said to him, you know, Matt, maybe it would be helpful if you talk to somebody outside of the family, you know, like, w would you want to do that? So I made an appointment with him. So we go in there and um, she sits down with us and after no more than 15 minutes of talking with Matthew and asking some questions, she gives us um, samples of Lexapro. So I said, what about, what about side effects? I said, you know, what should we expect from something like this? And she says, well, you know, they're very well tolerated. And um, she said, you know, you, they could have like headache or nausea or maybe some insomnia. So we went home with our sample pack of Lexapro. And at that point, he stopped wanting to talk. He seemed to be withdrawing more. This was weird behavior for him. Well, a lot was happening at this time also. And he was graduating from high school. Of course, the big plan, the kids always, they go to senior beach week. He didn't want to go. He wanted to go visit his brother. And uh, off he went. The day that he was supposed to be coming home, it was around one o'clock, I hadn't heard from him yet. He was supposed to call me when he finally left. Later on, I guess it was after I got off work, I called and he didn't answer. But a little while later, he called me back and he said, um, he might have said he was almost to North Carolina. It was about 11.30 and I called. He said, I'm fine, I just passed Roanoke. I woke up at around 2.30, kind of jumped up at the clock and realized he should have been home an hour ago. So I called the cell phone and went straight to voicemail. I kept calling and calling. I'm like, Matthew, answer the friggin' phone. I was like so upset. I fell asleep, woke up again. It was about six o'clock in the morning. He still wasn't home. I didn't know what to do. I started getting ready for work, went to work. I could hardly function. I went, told my boss I have to go home. Get in the door, phone's ringing. And there's this man on the other end and he said, I'm looking for the family of Matthew Steubing. I said, this is his mother, who's this? And he said, um, I'm calling about the jumping. Our world blew apart. We couldn't imagine that this had happened. We couldn't understand because this, this, this wasn't Matthew. None of this was Matthew. I mean, it was like, made no sense. It made no sense. That was the beginning of my story. As a mother, I needed to make sense of what had happened to my child. There were so many questions. What had we missed? The first answer came six months after Matthew's death, when my husband found a magazine article that linked psychiatric drugs to suicide. I was horrified. And yet, I knew we had found the answer to the biggest question of all. How could this have happened? The article answered some questions, but made me think of so many more. 
I had to find out for myself. I had to do something. This is for you, Matthew. Before, all I had ever heard about psychiatric drugs from the media, at schools, in the doctor's office, was how safe and effective they were. You know, you feel sad and that means you have a chemical imbalance in the brain. Just take a pill and that will help even you out. No problem. But this certainly didn't happen in Matthew's case. Something was wrong with that story and I needed to find out what. But were there any professionals who could tell me what's really going on? Dr. David Stein, a psychologist who has written many books and articles against the use of psychiatric drugs on children, agreed to talk with me. So I made the three hour drive to see him. Tell me what brought you to drive all the way down here. Well, we uh, went to a doctor, a psychologist. Okay. And my son was um, diagnosed with depression, and we were told that it was be caused by a chemical imbalance. Um, is there such a thing as a chemical imbalance in the brain that can cause um, psychological problems? No, actually, that's one of the misstatements of uh, disinformation or misinformation that's coming out. And unfortunately, I think a psychologist believes there's a chemical imbalance. And a lot of people do, the psychologists, the educators, the psychiatrists certainly accept it, and now pediatricians are accepting it. It is not caused by chemical imbalance. And what makes me angry is so many of the doctors are just buying into that. It's just not true. There's no test or anything that could have been done to determine that. Am I right? They claim that they found this chemical imbalance or that anatomical problem or anomaly with the brain or nervous system. And yet, if you were to send your child to a lab to have the chemical tests done on his blood or urine, they would look at you like you're insane because it can't be done. So what they claim is an imbalance cannot be measured by any laboratory or urine tests or PET scans or CAT scans. None of it can be replicated at the clinical level. And there are about a thousand claims that come out every year where they think they've found the cause of depression or ADD or bipolar disorder. None of it is true. Does that answer your question, Celeste? Yes. Okay. I so I feel that if I had known better, if I'd had the information in front of me to make a decision, he would never have been on that drug to be to be honest, it never would have been on that drug. And I believe we would have worked it through. So I feel, I feel to blame. You feel guilty? I do. I think I'll always feel that way. You did not let your son down. You were an honest parent, honestly seeking help for your son who was having some trouble. And if you went to the bookstore, the books would say the same thing the same garbage would be inundated through all the bookshelves. So you'd pull one book after another book after another book, and all you would get is chemical imbalance or a neurological disorder and all this, and they need the drugs, and the drugs and therapy, the combination is the way to go. You would have gotten it from everywhere you would have looked, except the very few scholars around the nation and the world that are fighting this, and we're a rare breed. We read deep into literature. You're not at fault, Celeste. I think your attitude will change, but right now, the prevailing and pervasive attitude is what you walked into. It makes me angry. I feel anger at hearing your story. Dr. Stein, thank you so much. God bless you, and uh, I'll help you any way I can. Appreciate it. What Dr. Stein said shocked me. Why hadn't I heard this before? Why hadn't anyone told me this? Was the mental health industry knowingly lying to me? And if they had lied to me, surely I wasn't the only one they lied to.